Ladies and gentlemen, it says, um, for number three, it says a vertical stretch by a factor of one third, a reflection in the y axis, and a vertical translation six units up. Now, in this one, we have our equation y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, right? Um, so first of all, let me go and do this if we were going to talk about the reflection of the x-axis, because that's the one we're more common, commonly known, known for. If you're going to reflect about the, so basically to write the equation, we really just need to figure out what a is, what h is, and what k is. Would everybody agree with me? Yes? OK. Um, so we want to have a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 third. So therefore, we know a is going to be 1 third. Right? Because A affects your vertical stretch. Um, a reflection of the y axis. Well, if it was a reflection of the A axis, if it was a reflection of the x axis, what would be the value of A? Would A be positive or negative? Negative, right? OK. Um, and the vertical translation, six units up. So which one tells us vertical translation, H or K? K. So K is a positive 6. So if it was a reflection about the y axis or x axis, it looked like this. Oops. That's cubed, by the way. Does that make sense? Yes? No? OK. All right, so one thing that we didn't really cover as much um, because it's not really as big with quadratics and um, absolute value. Because you guys remember, quadratics and absolute value were symmetrical about the y-axis, right? So if you reflected them over the y-axis, there wasn't really much that really changed. However, there is another equation we could write. y equals a times bx minus h cubed plus k. So in this problem, if you have a reflection about the y-axis, b is going to be negative 1. So the actual problem for this one was still going to be 1 third, but it's positive. x, I'm sorry, minus x cubed plus 6. So the number in front of b would, would represent your y-axis reflection. So if that's negative, that's going to reflect about the y-axis. OK? Yes? No? Maybe so.